Hello, everyone. I want to thank you for joining us tonight. We're going to be talking about uh, some California tribal scholarship opportunities that the American Indian College Fund has. And I'm going to share um, uh, my presentation with you. Uh, there is a, uh, a website that we use for uh, interactive uh, participation uh, for, for these types of events. It's called menti.com. If you can open up a, an additional window uh, for menti.com, that will um, that allow you to participate in our presentation tonight. <clears throat> so uh, our, the scholarships for California tribes that the American Indian College Fund offers is the Great Oak Future Leaders Scholarship. Uh, this was started less than two years ago and provides uh, funding for uh, Native uh, students to basically attend vocational, a degree in graduate programs uh, anywhere in the United States uh, through this funding. As I mentioned, this is a program of the American Indian College Fund. We are one of the most highly rated and largest native serving organizations uh, in the country. <clears throat> and uh, just last year, we uh, awarded $9 million to almost 4,000 native students who are seeking degrees and other types of career advancement. So this new opportunity uh, that we've mentioned, uh, it has the, um, the, the same uh, application cycle as all of our other scholarships, which begins on February 1st of every year. And that finishes up on May 31st. So the application deadline is May 31st every single year. And, um, Basically, that's for the next school year. So that would be for the upcoming 2021-2022 school year. So the application that's open now would be for funding for the next school year. And you can get information and apply at collegefund.org forward slash California. So let me interact with you guys a little bit right now. Uh, that menti.com, they have this code here at the top. Uh, you can type that in if you want to and, and connect with us. I just had a question, basically, what types of degrees can you get scholarship funding for with the Great Oak Future Leader Scholarship? Is it vocational, undergrad, or graduate? If, if you were listening carefully when I started, you would know that basically all three of those are possible with our um, scholarship program. So up to $20,000 is available per student per year for these degrees. And that can be vocational or technical, you know, uh, seeking a specific uh, certificate, uh, an undergraduate degree, a traditional um, college degree, or graduate programs. Uh, those that are seeking higher, higher, um, higher ed uh, degrees in other schools. And we like to renew funding as much as possible with students. Uh, obviously, with vocational, there's a smaller funding amount, and with undergraduate, it depends on if you're attending a private or a public school or if you're seeking a graduate degree, but there's a large amount of funding, and because this is a new scholarship opportunity, there's still lots of opportunities for students to get funding for this scholarship. So I'm going to test one more area as far as um, eligibility for the scholarship. And these are three, three, one of these three is correct and the other two are not correct or they're partially correct. So for eligibility, you must be an enrolled tribal member. You must have a 3.0 GPA or you must attend a tribal college. Which of those do you think is true, 100% true? I don't know if you've looked at anything on our website, but these are some of the eligibility guidelines. Uh, you must be a US citizen. You must be a tribal member of an eligible tribe. And that's the one that's 100% true that you saw before. Actually, you only need a 2.0 GPA to qualify for, for um, eligibility. You must be a full-time student. And one thing that I like to, to point out is that a financial need is not required for the scholarship. So you do not have to share uh, your tax returns or FAFSA information 
that is not required to apply for this scholarship opportunity. Now, when we talk about eligible tribes, not all California tribes are eligible, but most are. So that is set by the state revenue compact with the tribal nations in the, in the state of California. And is basically all tribes that do not receive a substantial amount of income from gaming or other sources are eligible. So that would be more than 70 tribes in the state and that's of 109 that are recognized. So the, you know, the large majority of tribal nations are eligible. And you can view a list of all the eligible tribes at that same scholarship website that I mentioned before, collegefund.org forward slash California to see if the a tribe that you're a member of is eligible. Now I did want to play um, a short video. This is actually one of our, our um, scholarship recipients. His name is Christopher Villaruel. He, um, is a tribal, uh, excuse me, he's a, a forestry and hydrology major at Humboldt State. And just wanted to kind of give you an example of some of the students that we have funded so far. Historically, it was common for us to go out with the families along certain, you know, like family areas that were designated. And it was your responsibility to go and burn and help another family over burn. And, you know, you're cleaning out like the shrubs and the grass and, you know, the old growth grass to allow new growth. You're like creating a buffer around your uh, village sites because normally you're going to get lightning strikes around along the, high, the highlands that are going to burn naturally. So the idea is when you burn around your village, you're buffering your uh, living space so you know you're not in danger of a burn once it goes around your village and moves forward. Our people were like not only pushed out of the land but you know burning was illegal. They didn't want us burning like if an Indian was burning you're that's like an act of hostility you're like it's a declaration of war and fires wild Indians are wild and like America unfortunately wanted to suppress anything wild so you know along with you know, the uh, genocide and relocation of our people, the practices of burning were, you know, banned and outlawed. You know, as a tribal forester, I feel like getting my certs and hopping on prescribed fire and, uh, you know, reading about different techniques in fire, that's like a personal interest of mine that I'm trying to take advantage of and get, you know, versed in. So I got to train with like uh, expert firefighters who are fire bosses who are like been firefighting for like 12, 15 years. You know, tree fallers showing us how to fall trees correctly. You know, something that really stood out to me to one of my uh, mentors, I think she was always talking about building a relationship with fire, not fighting it, not, you know, taming it. What we did that day to burn and clear allotments for the Yurok people or their family allotments was like, you know, to this day, probably like the most fulfilling volunteer work I've ever done. But it's, it's kind of hard to call it volunteer work. It felt like I was in a, like a prayer ceremony, like that feeling you get after ceremony, you know, it's the same feeling as you get after a prescribed fire. That's one thing that I really like the forestry major. Yeah, it is like a Western uh, science path, but, um, Forestry degree is like a multifaceted uh, degree where you have to learn all these different disciplines and stuff. And I feel like, you know, our people historically, you know, you know, we were like what you might consider like a forest engineer or forester, you know. And when I was a kid, I was taught by Smokey, Smokey the Bear, like uh, fire's bad, you know, prevent forest fires. So really like as I'm learning more about fire ecology and like actually going out and burning, I'm like, uh, kind of like uh, going against everything that they taught me in grade school. And that was, um, like I said, one of our scholarship recipients right now, Christopher, he is stu studying at Humboldt uh, in forestry and hydrology and is really hoping to come back to the Pitt River tribe to serve his people uh, and take care of the land um, and we've been supporting him for several years, but 
obviously <laughs> there are students who receive support, then they graduate, and then there's more opportunities for other students. So we want as many eligible students to apply and take advantage of these, these critical fundings that we have. So now I wanted to quickly go through our application process and what you can do to prepare to apply and be successful. Uh, one of the, the important parts is just to understand what the application is. And when you go to our scholarships page, you'll actually see this first. This is the application walkthrough video. And I would highly recommend that you guys watch this uh, if you're thinking about filling out the application uh, and being successful with this. It takes you through every part of our online application and gives you tips uh, on exactly what you can do to be successful with that. Now, in addition to that video, uh, this, is, this is kind of what you see when you actually go to the application, you log on, you set up a profile. And that profile is just basic information like name, date of birth, address, phone number, things of that nature. And then once you finish that, you actually have the option to apply for the scholarship. So it's actually a two-part process. You set up the profile and then you apply for a scholarship. Now with that, uh, you will have a lot of different information that you'll provide. Uh, that'll be information about your school, your GPA, extracurriculars, all the different things that you have done. But you also have three short answer questions. And these are a very important part of our scoring and grading for the scholarship application. So this is a chance for you to share your unique story and goals. We really want you to focus on this and give us as much information as we can. You wanna answer your questions clearly, completely and compellingly. We want you to take some time in filling out the, the three uh, short essay questions that we have. In fact, uh, that, that walkthrough video that I mentioned a second ago, that has the three questions in there. You can write those out ahead of time and you can fill that out in you know, some sort of word processing software like Google Docs or Microsoft Word or something of that nature, and then copy and paste that into the actual application when you fill it out. And then of course, you wanna focus on descriptive language, fluid ideas, and technical conventions. When I said technical conventions, that means accuracy, grammar, spelling, all of those things are important. We have really great readers that read through all the essays that we have. Uh, these are native professionals uh, in higher ed that know native students and understand the, you know, the unique uh, challenges uh, and things that they're trying to accomplish. So it's very important that you you tell your story and you do that in a compelling way, but also in an accurate way. Be sure that you're not putting, you know, incomplete sentences or things in there that would be harder for someone to read. Now, there's also application tips in FAQ pages on the College Fund website. It has a lot of information, especially answers to questions that you may have about eligibility, about tribal enrollment, about uh, what those short essay uh, questions are and maybe how you can address those. But all these resources are available on our website to kind of help you out. And one other thing I want to mention is that, like I said, you'll fill out your profile and then you'll have the chance to fill out the scholarship application. But if you attend a tribal college, you can actually apply for more funding, which is really great. American Indian College Fund supports a network of 35 tribal colleges and universities throughout Indian country. All of them are nonprofit accredited schools uh, that most of them are chartered uh, by tribal nations. A few are chartered by the federal government and under the BIA, but those institutions really provide some phenomenal supports and you can request more scholarship funding if you're attending one of these schools. So like I said, these are accredited schools that offer not only just traditional bachelor's and graduate degrees, but also some vocational and technical certificates as well. The class offerings that they have are really infused with traditional knowledge, not only you know, studying on, on more traditional educational topics, but they offer additional uh, course learning uh, in areas of arts, language, uh, ceremony, 
Uh, and there's lots of different activities and things that are, that are provided in their institutions that support specifically Native students. And then also one of the, the biggest things that I would say is, is they provide a familial student support. So you are treated like family. These aren't huge institutions with thousands and thousands of students. The teachers, they know all of their students, uh, the, the different guidance counselors and financial aid advisors and other administrative staff, they know all the students who are part of their institutions. And they really reach out and support you, not in any way like you'll see at other, other schools at all. Now, we offer some great scholarship opportunities, but do any of you think that the College Fund only offers scholarships to Native students? So do you think yes, no, or is, are you done with this presentation? <laughs> you want to be done with it. Actually, we actually provide a lot of additional support to uh, Native students. So I just want to go over a few things with you really quick, and then I'll be able to answer some questions that you may have. So many of the scholarships that we provide also include coaching support and additional resources. So depending on the scholarship that you're matched with, it could have additional support for your journey in school to kind of help you to be successful. There are a lot of specific internship placement and career planning resources that we provide. Uh, all of those are free and a lot of them are specifically provided just to our scholars. So if we have specific uh, internship opportunities that we have maybe with a partner organization or with the college fund itself, those are offered to our scholars first before anybody else. Uh, there's also additional conference and event opportunities. A lot of our students are able to attend uh, conferences you know, around the country at really um, either reputable institutions or if it's a specific field of study, it's an association, we're funding a lot of those for our scholars to attend as well. And our scholars can also apply to be a college fund student ambassador, uh, which is a very selective but very rewarding leadership uh, program that we have. Uh, we have about 12 students every year uh, that are selected to be a part of this group that represents the college fund, but then also goes through a pretty holistic training program that helps you to tell your story, to learn leadership skills, uh, and to really provide some additional resources to really give back to your community. Most of our ambassadors are doing programs on their campuses or in their communities with help from the College Fund to kind of increase the reach of the, the College Fund, but then also to support Native communities. Also, I'd like to mention that we have some great scholarship newsletters. Uh, you can go to collegefund.org forward slash stay connected. Uh, there you'll find two specific ones, one about scholarships, the other about internship and experience opportunities that you can sign up for. You'll basically get an email every month that will have a lot of different opportunities in it, not just opportunities with the College Fund, with a lot of other Native organizations, uh, opportunities for, for different uh, minority programs, and those that are really valuable. So we have a lot of people who sign up for those publications, and they are excellent in what they provide. And finally, uh, I want to talk about our Native Pathways program. So the Native Pathways College Going Guidebook is available for free on our website. That is a great resource for students who are thinking about going to college or who are just starting college to help them to understand exactly what the challenges are that they'll face and give them lots of tips and advice on how to be successful. On that page as well are a lot of different free events that we offer throughout the semester. Every month we're offering usually at least two to three events. Uh, and this could be anything from, um, you know, a career um, development event to uh, how to apply for an internship, how to interview for an internship. Uh, we also, also have been offering a lot of self-care events, a lot of uh, relaxation and meditation events and, and opportunities for basically social connection for you to connect with people online, especially during um, the COVID pandemic. All of those events are free and you can find all of those at collegefund.org forward slash Native Pathways. So that's where that guidebook is. That's where all those events are. You can sign up for free. And then of course, you can also follow us on our social media channels at Native Pathways. 
a lot of that same information and even some additional opportunities we're posting daily on those platforms. So if you're on Instagram, Facebook, Twitter, follow us and you'll see a lot of those different opportunities, especially when things are coming up, when there's a deadline coming up for specific scholarship or internship, we'll let you know about that so you have time to apply. So this is the end of my presentation. Uh, I want to remind you again that our application that's open now for the next school year, that deadline is May 31st. That is the very last day that you can apply for uh, the Great Oak Future Leader Scholarship if you're um, uh, one of the eligible tribal members. And that's another thing I want to point out too, that scholarship application is the same as our main scholarship program, the Full Circle Scholarship. So even if you're not a member of an eligible tribe uh, within California, if you're a native student that's an enrolled member, you can still apply for the full circle scholarship. Uh, so if you're not one, in one of those 73, 74 tribes in the state, you can still apply for our full circle scholarship program and you would be eligible for that as long as you meet those other requirements, 2.0 GPA um, uh, and, and also, with, with the full circle program as well, uh, you can apply as a descendant. With the Great Oak Future Leader Scholarship for tribal members, you must be an enrolled member. But with our full circle program, if you're a descendant, either from a parent or a grandparent who's a tribal enrolled tribal member, you can also uh, be eligible through that. So I've been talking for quite a while now. Uh, I'd like to answer any questions that you have. If you have anything that you'd like to share in the chat, please do that. I'm going to stop sharing my screen right now and come back on. If any of you have any specific questions, just type those in the chat. I'm happy to answer those. I know there can be specific situations that you may have uh, that you have specific questions about. I'm happy to answer those. And our College Fund staff are always available as well to answer your questions. If you go to that collegefund.org, forward slash California, or just the regular collegefund.org site and go to our scholarships page, there's a chat bot uh, on that site, which can help to answer your questions. And if they aren't answered, it'll send us a message and we can get back to you. We also answer any questions that we get through our social media channels, through Instagram, through Facebook, through Twitter, any, any questions that come through that. We also answer those uh, as quickly as we can to help you with, you know, with your application. Uh, so I have one question here. It says full circle scholarship information is also available on the website. Yes. Uh, actually, when you're applying for the Great Oak Future Leaders Scholarship, that will take you that, that main uh, page, that California page that has all the eligible tribes listed on it, gives you all the information. When you click through to actually apply, it's actually taking you to our main scholarship application system. So you're applying just like you would uh, for our regular full circle program, the thing that differentiates you is if you are a member of an eligible tribe, you're going to provide that information in your profile and application. It will automatically put you into the category for the Great Oak Future Leader Scholarship. And like I said, if you're not a member of an eligible tribe for that specific opportunity, it would make you eligible for our other full circle scholarship opportunities. So once you set up that profile, that kind of the basic information, uh, when you complete that, it'll take you to a dashboard and there'll be either one or two different buttons for you to click. One will be for the full circle scholarship. That is also how you apply for, um, uh, for the Great Oak Future Leader Scholarship. But like I said before, if you're going to a tribal college, you would also have an opportunity to apply for a tribal college and university scholarship. Like I said, there's additional funding for students who attend those schools. And several of the students that we work with that are now a part of our ambassador program uh, in California, they are attending tribal colleges. Uh, a couple of them are attending Northwest Indian College in Bellingham, Washington, which is a really fantastic school. Uh, some are attending um, uh, Institute of American Indian Arts uh, in Santa Fe which has some phenomenal arts programs uh, in performance, film, writing. Uh, I don't know if you're familiar with it, for some of you who are in, in uh, Oakland area or LA area, 
uh, Tommy Orange, the writer, he is a graduate of their Master of Fine Arts program. Uh, there's some really great native writers and performers and artists who've come out of their programs. That's also an excellent institution. Uh, and then a lot of other schools throughout the country. And a lot of them have very strong programs. You can explore those a little bit on our website. Uh, we have those listed. It's basically a tribal college directory that talks a little bit about their institutions. We're also introducing some new virtual tours that will tell you a little bit more. And those tours are actually led by the students themselves. They're not just faculty and staff just talking at you and telling you how great their institutions are. The students talking about their experience and the programs and support that they've received. So I would definitely tell you to check those out. Um, like I said, the support that you receive, you can attend any nonprofit accredited school in the entire country with the support you receive. You don't have to just attend California institutions with those scholarships. You can attend any nonprofit accredited school that's gonna provide a vocational certificate, a bachelor's degree, a graduate degree, whatever that is. And hopefully if you're doing well, if you're what if you're, you know, have the support that you need and you continue to do well year after year, hopefully if you're selected, you'll continue to receive that scholarship every single year, which makes a huge difference, not having to worry about working, finding loans or other types of support. That gives you the freedom, the confidence to focus on your, your educational and career path that you're headed to. And that's one of the things that we are really most concerned about with the types of support that we provide. I don't know if there's any other questions that you guys have. I will put into the chat again, <coughs> excuse me, uh, the website, collegefund.org forward slash California. And you can go there, get all the information that you need. Like I said, it has the basic information about what is covered, what the eligibility requirements are, and all the eligible tribes that are listed. And then if you want more information about just our full circle programs, scholarships, the additional scholarships that we offer, that, that's also available on that same website that you're going to, the collegefund.org website. Uh, you'll, all that information is just on our main scholarships page. That video that I talked about, the walkthrough, application walkthrough video is on there that links to the, um, the uh, frequently asked questions and application tips pages. There's also even a link to an additional scholarships page that we have because we realize that a lot of the funding we're providing won't completely cover your educational journey. So we have an entire page that has scholarship opportunities that we know of that are reputable, they're provided either by other native scholarship providers or other scholarship organizations that provide great support to minority students or those that are seeking um, maybe uh, support in a specific uh, study area like STEM or arts or nursing or things of that nature. A lot of those links are also on our web website too. And of course, if you have questions that you can't easily find or if you're just stumped, we don't want you to you know, get frustrated and kind of give up. We're also available to you uh, through our uh, through our, our office, our main office. We're located in Denver, um, but we're always available through email. You can call us on the phone. Like I said, you can message us through that chat bot or through our social media platforms. All those things, we, we really try to connect to you and answer your questions, either connecting you with the resources that you're looking for or answer it may be a very specific question that you have about your eligibility, uh, forms that you're submitting. And one of the things that's, that's great about our application is you don't have to submit an official uh, transcript. You can just submit a transcript that you can upload from your school or something of that nature because we verify all that information later on. And of course, like I said, we don't have a financial requirement, so you don't have to provide tax returns or FAFSA information or anything of that nature when you're applying. What we're most concerned about is what your journey is, what you're doing. We want you to communicate that as best as you can through the application so that we can help you to accomplish your goals and dreams that you have. Um, I don't know if anyone else has any more questions. Uh, you can feel free to put those in the chat. Otherwise, I'll go ahead and finish up.
Uh, I'd rather be short on time uh, and, and give you the time to explore and go to those pages and look for yourselves. We'll also be posting a recording of this webinar onto that uh, page, that cal collegefund.org forward slash California. We'll be posting this recording if you want to go back and look at it or share it with a friend or a family member or someone that you know that you feel could be attending this uh, it's, um, this um attending this event at a later time just to view it. One other thing that I also point out too, uh, within the college fund and really within a lot of um, either native scholarship organizations or minority serving scholarship organizations, most of the students that we serve are not what, you know, what would be considered traditional college students. They aren't high school students that are just graduating and going directly into school. A lot of these are, are students who are older. Uh, they have kids, they have careers. They're going back, uh, they're learning more, they're seeking kind of their, their career path at a later time in their lives and, and trying to get support to help to do that. That's the majority of the students that we serve. So don't feel that we only serve teenagers or those that are in college or those that are going into college. We're looking for any student, uh, especially uh, those that qualify and helping them to achieve their goals and dreams. So. Don't feel like if you're at a certain age, you can't apply for these scholarship opportunities. They're available to students of any age. So even if you're applying yourself, uh, if you have a parent, if you have a child, if you have a cousin, if you have anybody that you know that you feel would be benefit from this, please pass this along to them. Because like I said, this is a new scholarship program. We really want to connect this with as many eligible students as possible and give them support that they need to kind of seek out and you know achieve their education and career goals. So feel free to pass this along, uh, tell other people, connect them to these resources and opportunities, or even just you know point them to the link for this webinar so that they can learn a little bit more once the recording is up. So anyway, I don't see other questions. So I just wanna thank you for attending tonight. Uh, you can always reach out to our staff, like I said, through all those different communication portals. And this will be up on that College Fund page soon if you want to share it or view it again at a later time. And don't hesitate to contact us with any questions. So thank you so much. Hope you have a good evening. And uh, hopefully you all will be applying and we'll be seeing your applications before May 31st. Thanks a lot.